Welcome to this Rover Crit expansion review. Today, we're taking a look at the second expansion to Stonemaier's civilization building game, Tapestry. If you don't know about it, Tapestry is a game in which you are competing against each other, building up your civilizations, going up different tech trees, whether you're gonna focus on technology, science, military, or exploration. Whoever has the most points wins. The first expansion, Plans and Ploys, really more updated some few components and some rules changes, as well as added maybe some quality of life components. If you wanna learn either about that expansion or the base game, we have videos on those as well. That's right, but today we are talking about this brand new one, Arts and Architecture, and this one adds a few new wrinkles that add some more strategy, some more depth, some more stuff to your tapestry game. To begin, you will notice that there is now a fifth track. In the original game, there were four different tracks you could expand on. Now they have a separate board just for the arts track, which has its own set of bonuses, benefits, and thematic namings of things as you progress your way from cave painting all the way up to flash mobs <laughs> and uh, finally streaming implants in people's brains. And alongside this track, there are a couple of unique things that it can give you. There are these masterpiece cards you can see right here. If you hit something with that masterpiece card symbol, you get to take one of these and it will actually go over your maker of fire section on your board. And during an income turn, they're gonna give you specific rewards depending on what resources or icons they show you. You can also take from the top of the deck if you don't think any of the three that are showing are something that are gonna help you out too much. There are also now these inspiration tiles. And if you see anything with this light bulb symbol here, that means you'll get inspired Inspired, and you actually get to replace one of these tracks at the top of your board, your building tracks, with one of these new ones. These are going to give you better rewards. They're gonna have better things underneath, usually more victory points or some kind of special reward. So they're helping you out without having to go back and undo everything. All your buildings are gonna stay the same place as they were, but it's another way for you to get a leg up on your opponents. That arts board is the newest, flashiest, most significant change to this expansion, I think, I would argue. But there are, of course, a bunch of new cards that have been added into some of the existing card piles that were already in the game. Of course, there are new tapestries. We've got a few out here. Some of them will involve that arts track or just have their own generic new abilities that you can use with any of the different sets. There's also this new type of continuous tapestry. They actually allow you to place your buildings on this card instead of in your capital city, and you'll have different effects or rewards depending on which of those tapestries that you have. There are also new types of technology cards that you'll be able to acquire. Again, some of them will help you out with that arts track in particular. And there's a, a new type of tech card that requires certain landmarks to be placed on it in order for you to allow it to progress. So landmarks are gonna have more of a potential impact on the game, and there are more landmark cards. This is something that was added in the Plans and Ploys expansion, where you start the game with your own unique landmark that you will be able to place if you meet certain conditions. You can see some of these landmarks over here on this Capital City mat, and there are new Capital City mats advanced capital city mats with more complicated rule sets. Whereas before they were all kind of the same basic thing, but with different layouts. Now there are unique things. For instance, this one right here, you are not allowed to extend your landmarks off the side of the map, something you were able to do previously. So they all have their own unique types of challenges to add. And of course, there are new civilizations for you to build off of. Right here, we're seeing renegades, which actually gives you a fourth track or in the case or fifth track in this case it's a sixth track if you're playing with the arts Our own personal track that you get to advance on there's more there's the relentless faction civilization which allows you to place tokens if you get buildings and then on a turn where you don't get buildings you can trade them all in for big rewards urban planners have specific desires for you and how you're laying out your capital city or there's even the gamblers here who make it so you draw a few cards and kind of see what you get for your tapestry each turn rather than carefully planning them out based on what's in your hand already. So a lot of those different things are in the mix. The arts board, as I said, is the biggest thing that's going to have, I think, the most impact on your game overall. Also, there are going to be some adjustments to the solo rules. Makes sense when you're adding a new track. That's going to change how the AI thinks. But there also are a bunch of changes to the civilizations. 
in the plans employees. There were a couple changes and balancing issues, and this has just grown since then. And it doesn't have the same one. Some sieves that were balanced in plans employees were balanced again in this one. So it's something to keep an eye out if you felt like a faction was maybe too strong or too weak. Yeah, it's nothing crazy. It's not like rules changes for most of them, just like a little tweak in the numbers or some extra resources or fewer resources, depending on how it is. So that's something you'll want to look for. Even if you don't have end up getting this expansion, if you have the original game, you may want to just look online to find out what those changes were. Some of them, I think, do actually revolve, though, around some of the new stuff that's in here. So I didn't look it up, but I'm almost certain they're there. Now, Plans and Ploys, like I said at the very beginning, really felt more of a quality of life expansion. It did add the personal landmarks that we showed earlier. Mm -hmm. and as well as these pogs, but that is definitely a quality of life thing. This one really feels like the first one, we're adding a really big new thing. I yeah. mean, a whole new track. <laughs> <laughs> a whole new track, yeah. It's the, there really are, I think we usually say two kinds of expansions, right? Like you said, there's the expansions that are just more of the same and the expansions that are a, a new rule set, a new thing. And this is definitely that. It's taken up more table space. Uh, other One thing I do like about this, the first thing I'll say that I like about the arts track is that it, it kind of feels like it, in a way, it sort of completes the set, whereas each other track required a specific resource to advance in. The arts track is all wild, but then some of them are two that aren't the same or over here, two that are the same. So I kind of like that this is like your, uh, I'm not, I don't have a specific plan for my resources. This is kind of like the jack of all trades place to put them. <laughs> yes. And the masterpiece cards are something I really love because it pretty much gives you a whole way to customize your your income phase and also get strong. They, they have variety here. As you can see, graffiti gives victory points and a resource. Tapestry, I mean, I had to put tapestry out. <laughs> it gives you a tapestry card and any resource. And then mime, there are a couple cards like here, actually one time. In this case, the mime lets you copy an ability you're already on. So if you get that tapestry late game when you decide to trigger it and you're on the end space and like the end of the sign space and you get, I'm rolling all these dice again. Oh, and we forgot to mention, signs gets a new dot because you got to know if you see, if you roll the arts. Oh, thank God. I actually rolled the arts there. <laughs> very, very nice. Yes. This is now even more sides on this baby. I think it's a D20. Yes. And I think the ratios are percentage wise are still close. And yeah. I mean, it's always equal, but still the general uh, weighted symbol. I think it just adds a lot more. Like I thought adding a fifth track would make me feel a lot weaker. Like we'd end up only being at like. Mm. The first stage in all the tracks. Spreading yourself too thin. Yeah, but I didn't think of that. I think it gives enough that you're able to go up in the other places as well, at least in the games we played. Mm -hmm. Another, of course, I love the other cards added as well. I'm always a fan of that. I love that with the previous one because they had a lot more unique traps. This one has a few more other gotcha cards. These aren't technically traps, but for example, they have a spy master, which when you discard this from your hand of someone reaches the end of the track, and then you get some fun stuff too. So if someone next to you seems to be going way advanced, you're like, just, just hold on to it and wait. <laughs> they also have this one. This one, you can't play out of turn, but you can pretty much take a one of those common goals before someone else. And knowing if someone's about to reach the center island and you play that tapestry... Just, I, it's going to make people angry. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I noticed with the tech cards in particular, but there are other cards as well. There's a lot more ways to cheat in essence to get the space. Like the mm. jet flight, for example, lets you actually get a space tile pretty early on versus when you reach the end of the exploration track. I don't think I've ever gone to space in this game. <laughs> I have not, but I've seen other people. I don't know why. I just, exploration's probably my weakest track. I gotta say, I'm, it's a little sad. Yeah. But I like that he's making more things like, all right, I made this component. Let's make it so more people use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think all the all the new cards that are in addition here are cool. The um, inspiration tiles are, you know, they're they're cool. I wouldn't; those are probably the least to me interesting aspect of this. They're not exactly game changing, but and I don't know that we really needed like a whole extra. I feel like the masterpiece cards were like cool enough for this track to have its own card type. I don't know if I need these either, but they don't detract from anything. They're just, they're, they're fine. It is a little bit unwieldy and it is kind of, it does feel to me almost 
unbalanced, not in a mechanical sense, unbalanced in like a, a feng shui, like in my mind sense, just that four tracks felt so elegant. Each side of the board has a track. There is something almost a little strange about, and this fifth one that's off to the side that uh, does it need to be there. I almost wish there was like a five-sided board they made that would, <laughs> that would throw this onto one corner of it. <laughs> well, maybe in the future when he makes the Tapestry Masters Edition, there'll be the uh, Pentagon-shaped board <laughs> with that built in. I'd be into it. I'll be honest. I'd be into I it. I mean, I, as far as I can tell, Tetaku would not change the board. <laughs> yeah. But I understand where you come from, but we do have cards laid out on one end. So, by the way, this would not be – this would be against the board like flipped upside down. We have this so you can read it better. Yeah. So it – Takes up probably about the same amount of space the tapestry and the technology cards do. It's more of now we need two more tracks in addition to that on the sides. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what you do now. We have arts. We have science. We have military. Uh, what what can we add? In? We don't need any more. It's 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 enough. It's, it's enough. But yeah, yeah. So so it's so it's kind of kind of a lot. And I I do like the new uh, the new sieves. I think are all pretty interesting. I think they're pretty good at coming up with these at, at this point. And they didn't go overboard either. You know, the fact that there's only five new ones, I like that because it tells me that they actually made sure these ones are good and like work well with the others. Well, as you can see from the way that they put in a whole lot of updates, they realize like, <laughs> yeah, hopefully they, uh, they really focused in on those. For me, these advanced uh, capital maps are really interesting. And even though they have some crazy, not crazy rules, but some intriguing rules, I would love to see a lot more weird ones. Like this one's built out. There's one that is like, you can build over this, but if you build around it, it becomes a filled piece so you can get the resource bonus for filling up a section. And you played like also one was Cloud City. Uh, I didn't get the chance to play with, which it was pretty much just weirder patterns for that. I would love to see a lot of weird variety here. I think you can come up with some really weird stuff. Yeah. And probably you'd have to be careful. I understand balancing issues. Like if you made one that like every time you fill, instead of get a resource, you get a tech card. And <laughs> if you're playing a tech civilization, then you're like, yes, I'll take that map. But I think I, I liked how that worked. I just feel like I like, uh, I mean, plans employees. I liked it because it adjusted everything. But this one is the one that made me like, it, like there's so many more fun things to do now. Interesting. You know, Interesting. And it's hard. And I, the reason I bring that up is because I don't know which one I would say buy first. I almost feel guilty. I almost want to say buy this one first because it has all, all the up-to-date Civ changes. <laughs> you can look those up. Uh, but yeah, yeah well, I I have, feel, feel pretty confident in my opinion on that, at least. Uh, and it's, I'll say it because I think it might be contrary to yours. I feel like plans and ploys to me felt like – I don't know if I would go so far as to say it's necessary, but it felt like it completed, in a sense, the to me, the game of tapestry. I, maybe not, like, but it felt like... No, I get completely what you're saying, this and I don't disagree. This softens the edges that were there. This adds what needed to be added to like really make the game shine. And this, I feel like, is cool... But it's it's like I think this is for if you've played Tapestry a bunch and you really like it a lot already. I don't think this is, should be the first thing that you get just because I feel like if this never came out, this fifth – I never felt like, man, there should be a fifth track. Fair, I just never thought that. Fair you know? enough, but I will say that if I most likely play more games in the future, obviously depending on other people at the table, I'd want to play with the arts track. I mm. think it's a lot of fun. It's particularly the mastery cards I really enjoyed because I just felt like it gave you a whole lot more power without um, sacrificing too much. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, thematically, I think it, it fits great. And of course, these advanced boards and always more tapestry equipment. But I think that's not an arts and arts and architecture thing. Like that's any expansion. More tapestries, please. <laughs> yeah, those I have no problem with. It really, it really is this. And like I said, I do like it. I think my my concern is just. It, it, you know, I, I worry about bloat. And is there is there going to no, be a, yes, a sixth no. track ever? I, I, well, <laughs> you got to draw yes, the line No, somewhere. the way I would view that, and I think, remember, this is coming from only with this one existing as an extra track. Yeah. Would be like Arkham Horror 2nd Edition had multiple maps. I would never want to play with multiple because it was too much ground to cover. I would be like, we're using right, the arts yeah. module, or maybe we're going to use the gardening module, whatever yeah. the other thing. That's how I would do more. But I like the extra track because it did give enough power that didn't 
feel like it drained too much from the other ones and it adds plenty of other stuff. Of course, like you said, the tapestry, uh, not tapestry, wow, the plans and ploys does do that final bit, which is probably the one you should get, but do keep in mind that they have updated uh, the sieves if that's the main reason you're buying it. But overall, like, I was pretty happy with this. Yeah, I, I, I will give them uh, some credit that it, it thematically, I guess it does fill a hole because there really wasn't, in terms of building your civilization, they didn't have the arts. That was like the culture section is one thing that wasn't represented. So, and like I said, I do think the fact that it, this one uses resources of your choice is a nice touch. So like, I think they did a good job with it. I would definitely recommend this, pick this up if you really like tapestry. And especially if, you know, if you've been playing tapestry buy this. Like it's a good expansion, a little less enthusiastically than you, but I still enjoyed the content that was here. You can let us know if you've had the chance to pick this up and what do you think it brings to the table? Is this something you maybe play every now and then, or is this going to be included in every tapestry game moving forward? Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. Talk to us in the comments section to let us know how you feel about the tapestry expansions. Thanks for watching. My name is Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Roll for Crit. Thank you for watching this whole video. It means a lot. If you want to help support us more, of course, you can simply just click that like and subscribe down there. You can go to our Patreon or visit our merch store. Fun fact, if you're at the high roller tier in our Patreon, you actually get a discount for some of the awesome merch we have in our store. So check both out.